The Guardians are keeping their show on the road out west. That gives us time to continue or finish off our 2024 position previews with the Guardians' hottest hitter, Andre Jimenez. And what his true talent level is, will he stick at second base? What can we expect from him this year? Hopefully, talking about him today will keep his hot streak up. And, of course, we'll talk about the weekend in college baseball. Some big draft updates for you to know. You are Locked On Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show today. We're going to bring the heat more than Tristan McKenzie is so far in this game. I am Jeff. Over there is Justin. I uh, want to thank everyone. Remind you that uh, we are... You know, thank you for making us your first listen today and every day, wherever you get podcast. And remind you that we have your team covered every day. I'm Jeff Ellis, one of the co-hosts, one of the first people they ever brought in when they decided to do baseball cup podcasts at Locked On. Before that, I was at Scout and 24-7 as a draft and prospect analyst. And if you have a blog you like, I probably wrote for it at one point in time. I am Justin Lennon. I've been here since almost the postseason of 2022, just the end of that run. Things went downhill from there, so maybe this is all my fault. Who knows? Things are getting better. Uh, I've been covering the Indian slash Guardians minor league system since 2007 for also every blog you can think of. For a couple of years, I was the managing editor of Indian slash Guardians Baseball Insider after Jeff was long gone doing other fun things and now we're here together, and I still cover the Guardian system uh, freelance basis for a bunch of other places. One guy I didn't write about this year was Andres Jimenez. Maybe I should have because he is off. Hottest to guy a on great the team, start. as you praised it before we had to go back and restart. <laughs> he his bat could not be hotter. Uh, nobody's bat is hotter in this lineup right now than Andres Jimenez. Uh, today, this is our, obviously our last position, position preview for the year. Uh, we didn't get to second base in the preseason, but we're doing it now because the Guardians are out west and uh, we don't have a lot of time to cover the entire game before both of us go back to our, our day jobs. Yeah, but yeah, I, this I, does allow spring us break to ends for this. me. Yeah, it's over tomorrow for Jeff. Yeah. Uh, well, Andres Menace is, is going streaking right now on spring break. He is is going just absolutely crazy. Great start to the season for him. So I guess, you know, obviously you know, he's having a great start and he's hitting like, I think his WRC plus is over 600. Obviously he's going to keep that up and he is going to, I'm sorry, it's over two, it's 246. Obviously yeah. he's going to end the year 246 and he is going to take home the American league MVP. So we can really yeah. just move on with the discussion and just, uh, this would you know, be have the greatest be season it. a hitters ever had. Absolutely. Yeah. He is going and to surpass he can have a 400 and bat Williams and, no, you know, Nolan Jones, Jones I mean, yeah. think is going to, is going to sustain a 400 bat pip so he can, right. He can Why have not? a 400 bat pip. That'll work. Uh, actually, no, he's not. Though. Just did not have the highest uh, weighted runs created plus on the team. He's actually second highest. Just, just for the sake. To of Tyler Freeman, Ramon Laureano. Nope. nope. Uh, Freeman seventh. Laureano is eighth. David Fry. David, David Fry. Fry. I can't tell you how many people on Thursday night I got messages from. This is off topic, but we're like, David Fry. Who is David Fry? Why is David Fry playing? I'm like, okay. That's fine. Lefty just, murderer. You know, say that. David yeah, Fry. And, and I was like, I messaged one of my friends. I said, hey, what round of your, your fantasy draft did you take David Fry? And he goes, yeah, I'm sure you knew he was going to do that. I'm like, I didn't say he wasn't going to do that. All right. Last year, obviously, Andre Jimenez secured the bag. He got himself a nice long contract with the Guardians. He is going to be here probably through 2030. If they pick up that final option. Seven years, $106 million. 2022 was a great year for him. 297, 371, 466, 17 homers, 20 steals. Fantastic season, 6.2 wins above replacement per fan graphs, and a gold glove. Last year, you know, kind of a step back, 251, 314, 399. Still have 15 homers and 30 steals. So the counting stats were good. The strikeout rate actually came down. The walk rate was down, and then... Uh, in terms of Fangraph's wins above replacement. He dropped to a 3.6, but still won a platinum glove, actually. So I don't think, I, I, we've talked about this before, I don't think he's as bad as he was a year ago. And, I mean, the number, the counting stats all look fine. The rate stats are kind of what we're down, and obviously that had to do with the drop in, as you mentioned, batting average and balls in play. 
Is he going to carry 353 like he did in 2022? Absolutely no. not. Is he going to carry 289? I hope not. I hope it's, you know, 10 points higher, 20 points higher, and that certainly raises his floor. Um, I don't. I hate to say it'd be boring and say the truth is probably somewhere in the middle, but I think that's where it is. Well, Dominic Canzone just had a local moment to remember to interrupt the show. Um, we're, we're having the Tristan McKenzie of a few years ago where the he, he's walking too many guys and that leads to trouble. And then for nothing, yeah. Seattle. That's that's if you see in my face, that's what just happened. Good. Ugh. So no one's going to listen to this show. No, no, this is going to be bad. Now no one's going to watch. I mean, it, it, well, man, we don't have time to talk about McKenzie right now, but control down velocity down. You just worry about not, you know, avoiding surgery a year ago. It, it was that the right call. I, I don't know right now. He does looks like a shadow. Well, of where he was we're not going to jump off the cliff after one game. Are we? I know, I know, but it is, it is a really ugly. And we're not here to talk about Tristan McKenzie no. today. We're Let's get back to the positive Jimenez. Jimenez somewhere in between those two years, I think is where we both lead to, um, which is what the projections suggest. Yeah. I mean, if you look at zips, zips has him at 4.7 this year, with a 115 WRC plus 14 homers, 25 steals. That that sounds about right. I will say the encouraging thing so far this year for him is a early, it's early, it's early. It's been four games, but the exit velocity is up from a year ago. And that's important because he did have one of the lowest hard hit rates in all of baseball. The thing, I think the thing we're finding out too about hard hit rate or, or just exit velocity in general is that average exit velocity is kind of a terrible number to judge things on because number of things can happen on batted balls. You know, you can go out and just hit some really weak, weak balls out there and it's going to bring your entire profile down. But if you're a guy who can consistently average, I don't want to say average, but if you can reach, you know, anywhere so between one oh over a ninetieth percentile is sometimes often used more than just the overall one. Just yeah. Like which we don't you... get on Savant, but that, that tends to be the stickier stat in terms of yeah. predictability. And, and Jimenez last year was at one Oh two in the ninth percentile outcome for, for exit velocity, which is fine. Is it, you know, Aaron judge? Is it Jim Carl no. Stanton? No, of course not. But it's, it's more than enough to be a good hitter in the major leagues. If you're getting over hundred consistently. So I I'm curious to see if he keeps this up this year, if his, if his exit velocities, which I think is up three or four on average, if that continues to stay there, that can allow him to carry a higher average on balls and play, which is going to bring your base level of offense up. It's going to keep your, your average up and you know again it's early but he's got two walks and, and no strikeouts that's a good sign the strikes out his strikeouts were down a year ago and the walk rate hasn't is slid down, into first base at all that's true yeah that's <laughs> clearly he went to the school of jeff over the offseason yeah it's for not, it, for you know the, slide. with that contract and listen he had a bad year but he was still about league average with the bat and while being an exceptional defender the only way this guy isn't the next you know the current and future for the next five to six years at that position is if um he moves to short i think that's it like this, he's gonna play because of the defensive value so it's like and especially without they're paying him yes they got rid of miles straw but there's a little bit of difference between those contracts so he is your second baseman you know it, i expect him to be a guy who most years is about a four and a half win player with a lot of that coming from defense um i, I don't know if we'll get another six Six is exceptional. Like that is like borderline MVP candidate. So I think everyone rightly knew that that was unsustainable to that degree. And again, that's why we talk about the bat pip for a lot of young players to see how, what's going to occur. But the, the tools are there for him to be, you know, a solid contributor to this lineup, a guy who maybe should hit a little higher. We, we heard why he wasn't hitting as high for lineup balance, but you want your best hitters to get the most at bats. So. Yeah, so far he is mostly hitting second right yeah. now. I mean, they moved him down to seventh against lefties, which is which is really silly. Yeah, I think that Jimenez, the contract, obviously, I know some people aren't happy with the contract. I think it's a fair contract for what he's going to give you. He is going to give you stable defense. He still works out as a shortstop, so if he needs to move there, he becomes even more important to you, um, to the franchise, if they decide to move him to second to shortstop, and and if Rocky or Arias doesn't work out, and they. You know, if it's if it's Brito or if it's Martinez or you know whoever at second base, Bazana. If it's Bazana, yeah, that's a great combination. JJ Weather, about, obviously, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that's a little less fun to think about. Um, he becomes even more important to you. I would argue, in terms of offense, not just offense, or not just you know, if we're looking at just position players, not pitching, he is probably either to me the second, maybe the third most important player 
on the team in terms of position players, because you obviously have Jose as the most important, right? And then you have Bo Naylor, who I think has to be super important to them because he's a catcher who can provide some power and, and, you know, catching has always been important to this franchise, especially defense. That's an important piece for them to have a young all-star catcher. Possibly. I would say Jimenez is right up there in terms of importance for this team, because he is a great defender at second base. He's got a long contract, so he has to be important to the team in terms of his, his output. Um, but he can do everything. You know, he hits. For, you know, he's a twenty twenty guy potentially. Plays great defense. He could play shortstop. He hits lefties. Like he doesn't need to be platooned. You don't need to move him down the lineup if you don't have to. In terms of facing lefties, so he is just to me such a complete player that his importance to this franchise has just gone up, and I think it only will continue to go up. Yep. And on that note, I think we should come back and talk about some of the young players in the system who might, you know, cause him to shift if no one can uh, nail down shortstop. Yeah, there aren't a lot, but there are some. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some second base draft prospects. And of course, we've got the college baseball weekend update all coming your way. And first, we're going to talk about our good friends over at Amazon Fire Channels. You know Amazon because they're slowly but surely taking over the world. So you have uh, some kind of uh, product by them. And then when, you know, Judgment Day comes and all of the fire TVs uh, become sentient, if you've been watching your fire channels, they'll leave you alone. That's, that's not in the ad copy. I'm just throwing that in. That when the sentience comes for fire sticks and fire TVs, um, those who watch fire channels will be saved. Uh, now, in all seriousness, go check out fire channels. It's a constant supply of free content favorite sports bands sports brands like locked on you can go watch us on fire channels but it's just not sports it's not just sports brands you can watch you know college baseball uh content big leagues pro college conferences have content on there and it's going to allow you to dive deep into all that there's news entertainment gaming travel and cooking videos so you want to check out all of that all of your Fire channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me. It'll save you when Amazon devices become sent- sentient. Visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV, all one word, and learn more. That is incredibly dark. I was it was, not- it was the weirdest ad copy I've ever done. I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> That was uh, that was not as prepared for today. Second base <laughs> prospects, don't get prepared for this. By the way, it looks like the uh, the Blue Jays just got no hit. First no hitter of the year by Ronel Blanco of the Astros. So if you had uh, Ronel Blanco uh, as your first, the manga year, nearly had one today as well, right? Who did? Uh, Amanga from the Cubs. Okay, did it because I thought okay, it was a five hundred game. It, it wasn't a no hitter, but I think he nearly had one uh, today. Yeah, Nolan Jones didn't have a fantastic day over there, unfortunately. One of those players, speaking of Nolan Jones, one of those guys that could play second base, maybe. I don't know. Uh, could be Juan Brito. And again, that's why I'm saying the value of Jimenez is so great because let's say that you know Cleveland has been, you know, been developing these in middle infielders for years to the point where we just haven't seen any of them until this year for the most part. We saw Arias and Rokio last year, but Barely have they gotten any playing time. And the importance of Jimenez is now with him in that contract and his ability is that he can move over to shortstop if you need to, if that doesn't work out. But the only way that's going to happen is if one of these prospects, whether it's Juan Brito, Angel Hernandez, um, Angel Hernandez, geez, I hope Angel Hernandez. Is Not Angel to Hernandez, Angel Mart- no. Angel no. Angel Martinez. Or well in Francisco or or Travis Mazzano, which we'll get to if he moves over there. Um, it's only been a couple of games. I will. It's been two games, but Juan Brito has looked a little better defensively. That's really the rub. I think I think Juan Brito is going to hit enough. I just don't know where he ends up defensively. That's going to be the whole thing with him is can he stick on the infield defensively? Because I think I think the bats there. I think the approach is there. He can be a good league average hitter. He can take his walks. He's got some pop because he pulls the ball in the air pretty consistently and and with good skill. Um, I just don't know whether or not the defense will stick on the infield. That's the biggest question. Will he, will he be a left fielder, which, Hey, if he's your left fielder, that gives you room for Travis Pizana at second base and Jimenez goes to short anyway. Yeah. Or, or he's a future DH rotation guy. We'll have to, 
you know, see how things play out with him. But uh, he's the only guy who really stands out to me. Uh, Martinez was was the story of camp, but it, it was a rough year a year ago. Um, he's just a guy that kind of strikes strikes me as averages at best across the board. Maybe maybe I'll be proven wrong. I'd love to, but uh, you know, right now I think it, it's kind of Brito or bust. I mean, there are some other interesting guys, and I can easily be proven wrong. And you could easily probably even convince me I I, I have a, a bad take with this, but. You know, it, you have to unseat or cause this team to unseat um, Jimenez, and they're not going to do that unless you can do something that's going to be enough to convince them, like, you know, e- either the whole package or offensively, that shifting him is worth shifting him. Not only that, but also that relies on, again, one of Rokio or Arias to fail both, shortstop, really. which, you know, yeah. obviously, yeah, both. So, you know, obviously the hope is that doesn't happen. And then, you know, Brito may not be an infielder anyway, and maybe Martinez. I, I expect Martinez to play a lot more outfield this year in AAA when he gets healthy. Super By the way, some clarification. Guy. Yeah, some clarification. So he is on the major league injured list right now. He is not on the minor league injured list because that injury occurred in spring training before they optioned him back to AAA or the minors. So he is actually accruing service time right now in the major league roster on the injured list. It's not going to be enough to, like, make a major difference in terms of right now, but – Whenever they do bring him up, if he does come up, that'll, you know, play in at some point. But when he gets healthy and he's eligible to come off the injured list, he will be um, sent back down. Welbin Francisca is, is the one that's far away here. Yeah, We've heard a lot of people that we, we generally trust say the bat could be special. And I think most people feel like his future is at second base, but we'll see there. And then so far, good friend Nate so from the list, but. At judging yeah. uh, uh, hit tools from a distance, so we'll have to see. I mean, yeah. remember, like Rocchio and Valera, when they're at that level, were were labeled as like plus hit tool types yeah. with similar. So it's that's kind of why I often don't rank guys that low in the minors because you're just you, you're basing it off of someone else's reports often and not having seen and, them yourself. And any of these shortstops at any given time could not stick a shortstop and have to move to second base. Yeah, so that just adds them to the pool as well. All right, draft prospects. Obviously, the the top of the class here is Travis mm-hmm. Bazana. Uh, I still think there's a good chance you try him in the outfield. Look, an, yes. an, a, we know this. A a second baseman has never been taken one one overall. So let's say the Guardians do take Travis Bazana. Are they probably announcing him as an outfielder? Yeah, uh, you know, and that's the thing. Like we saw, like Nick Senzel, who's not as good of an athlete as, as Bazana, move to center field. Um, mm-hmm. being a high pick, I wouldn't be surprised well, if they took. Well, I'm I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they took him and announced him as, as a center fielder, and that let's yeah. try it till it fails. Like, let's put him out there. That he's a kid who would work his tail off. Um, so I, you know, put him yeah, out no there and see what happens. There. So it's like, um, and that's the thing. Like, I've had people ask about this. I, I'm not saying anyone else isn't a great player in terms of work ethic, but like Jeff Ponds, we had him on the show. Go back and listen to that episode. We talked probably an hour and a half afterwards. And we got so many things that we cannot spill the tea on in that discussion uh, (laughs) that like things that I had no idea about uh, around college baseball and the like. But for that guy who is that connected and who's knows the dirt and the bodies on everything uh, to sit there and be like, Travis Bazan has a work ethic unlike any he's ever seen in his life. Like that was kind of the kicker for me. Why it's a one, a one B. Yeah. Yeah. It's a one, a one B for me in this class, but like, when when someone who has so much inside intel makes that statement, that is something that uh, that stands out. It does. Uh, let's see. JJ Weatherholt's on this list, but he was supposed to move to short. Obviously, he hasn't played at all. He might end up as a second baseman, but I just think he's, he's been falling day to day hurt for a month. That is that strikes me as a guy who's going to need surgery. So there is a world, uh, very unlikely, where Cleveland tries to buy him down. surgery on your hamstring, though? Is, I mean, well, you know the number of times I've heard like a pitcher had has a hamstring hurt and they need Tommy John? Like, college baseball does not report their injuries correctly. He's got a back problem, Tommy John. Like, college baseball is infamous for bad injury reports. <laughs> they would be the GM of the Mets if you could personify them as a... Hey, uh, Bo Naylor was the first hit of the year, by the way. was when interrupting the show. In a nice situation. You nobody out. But, uh, yeah. I, it, you know, let's see if they make any more I, base running mistakes. Know. When we see the day-to-day 
that stretches for a month that that just makes my my radar go like uh oh uh oh uh oh it's been so two months he, he hasn't played since the end of february he's so he, two months yeah he played the first series of the year he played the first series of the year and then he didn't play <clears throat> all of mark i guess only yeah. a month but he didn't so play to, all of mark just quickly go through peyton Soval was a big name out of high school arkansas now right who's who's playing pretty well yeah i really right? liked him in high school i really did yeah I, I liked him in high school christian moore has a ton of swing and miss but has a lot of great skills um Tennessee. Griff O'Farrell. Tennessee is a, hitters. I don't know. Yeah, Tennessee. <laughs> uh, I mean, Tennessee, everything. It's not been a great track record. Griff O'Farrell has been at Virginia, but again, track record. Um, Ethan Gorson's a guy you like. I also, he's not on there, but uh, Deuce, Deuce Gorson. Or Ethan probably That's is same Deuce guy. Gorson. Yeah, yeah. Deuce Ethan Gorson. Name, at, yeah. Um, I'm just so used to seeing Deuce. Hey, another hit. There we go. That might get a run across. Nope. Just going to get All the right. bases loaded. Deuce Gorson's had high level production at UCLA, a program that nobody produces at. It's one of one of the ugliest for, for talent over the last few years. But, um, but he is on Davis Diaz too, from Vanderbilt, yeah. just because I liked him in high school. And I think he, I Vanderbilt hitters again, I think if you're yeah. in Tennessee or Virginia in that line, not great. Um, no. But Davis Diaz was a guy I liked in high school. He's got a good hit tool possibly. And there's some defense there and versatility. So maybe yeah. he's an option down the board. So those are some fun names. We're going to run and pay some bills. Um, I know I'm not supposed to phrase it that way, but I will. And then we're going to come back. And some guys like stood out over this past weekend and we got to talk about them. Someone had five home runs. Week. Five home yeah, runs. Fun weekend in, in college baseball. We've, you know, continued the one, one debate and some other fun players. And we had a comeback. We'll talk about that. Get in on the action on FanDuel. This is a great time. You've got the women's Final Four, which I think Iowa's moving on. That's a fun one. They're coming to Cleveland. Um, the NCAA Final Four is obviously going on right now. It's baseball season. The Masters are coming up in two weeks. March, I'm sorry, April now. March is a loaded sports calendar. April is as well. we got NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, all coming up this month. This is a great time to get in. If you're a new customer, you haven't tried FanDuel yet, Go in there, throw five dollars down on a bet that seems like a slam dunk. Maybe, maybe it's a low payout. Maybe you're taking something with really, really bad odds, and you're thinking, "Why would I do this?" Because I'm going to make put five dollars down and win three. Big deal. But if you do that and you win, and you're a new customer, you get two hundred dollars in bonus bets from FanDuel. That's two hundred bucks you can use on MLB, NBA, NCAA, NHL, so much more. Visit FanDuel.com/slash/lockdown. Make your first bet a big win. Get in there before the Final Four. Vandal, America's number one sports book. Sorry, that was my DP face. Luckily, it didn't happen. Quan legged it out. Um, oh, jeez. It was he. He was. This is what he happens was, with you being ahead of me? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was the DP face. We're not doing. We're not doing a live this time. All right. Where do you want to start? We talked about JJ Weatherhart real quick. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've been doing a one, one update w- once a week over at my, my newsletter at uh, next year in cleveland.com or set dot substack.com, whatever. Uh, you can check that out. I tweet that almost every, every, every week we do this, but like over the last couple of weeks, I've dropped out Vance Honeycutt and this week we're dropping out Seaver King because yeah. I just think that they're not really in the one, one discussion right now. No. No. I'm pretty close to dropping JJ Weatherhold. I, I have Weatherhold in there this week just because if he does come back, he had a very high pedigree coming into the year, but I think, you know, if he doesn't, they were talking about him coming back this past weekend. No sign. Didn't even, didn't appear once. So no, you know, how close are we at this point? There's still a lot of time left. Like you have all of April, you have May, you have part of June, if, depending on how deep West Virginia gets, if they get deep, he might have a- April and May really to play. Right. Like, at what point does yeah. he need to come back and start playing in order to get into one back in the one, one conversation? I mean, I, here's the problem, right? Like he was, he was, if you liked him and a lot of people thought he was the top player in this draft class, there were a lot of places that had him one, one, um, you know, it's, it's, you were essentially saying this guy can play shortstop and he's going to have like 70 hit and 50, everything else. He hasn't had a chance to show he can play cool, shortstop. He's, and that's not a, a great profile, but I mean, like, yes, it's a great profile, but it's not like a great one, one profile. Um, so I, I think, no matter what happens, he can't get yeah. back into it because it, he was one one. He's a great prospect. I want to say that right now. I'm sorry if you were, you know, Nick Kurtz's dad unfollowed us both recently. So I want to watch what I'm saying. I don't know who's hey, dad hey, Nick is. Kurtz is back. Yeah, hey, he had Kurtz two home runs on, on Sunday. Uh, but with Weatherhold, he's a very good prospect. 
but he's not won one in most years with the year Condon and Bazana of having, and with the way Hagen Smith has stepped up. And I know it wasn't chase Burns his best weekend, but tier one is four guys to me right now. And it's almost two guys with the pitchers, just a hair below them. But Condon and Bazana are just, they made it too big of a gap. I can't see how he can come back and show anything that can be like, okay, yes, this guy needs to be in the conversation with these other two, just because what the other two have done. Um, it's one A and one B. Because it, it, you know, Condon's probably got the better physical traits, and he's having a, an unbelievable year. But he had the weak cape data. Um, he's he's a mountain of a man, Limited, but he's got though. more power. It, it, and then you know, um, it, Bazana is just you know natural athlete. You know, really good production across the board. I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and compare the two. That's it's for another day. But it's like those two have done so much. It's hard to top. It is. And the thing, obviously, we have to compare is is level of competition right now because, you know, I texted you on Saturday. I said, oh, Charlie Condon, home run off of Drew Beam. He's a first round arm. You're not that high on Drew Beam. And I have to be honest, like there's really not a lot of reason, not a lot of data to prove that we should trust that Tennessee is high quality pitching. Like, to be fair, Bazana has not faced the best quality in, That's in why college the either. So much. Right. Because. He, he has outside of Hagen Smith, the pitching he's faced has not been great. Now, both these guys have dominated the pitching they face, which is what they're supposed to do. That's all you can ask. So, yep. we can say equally, neither of these guys have faced pitchers that are uh, other than Hagen Smith. And obviously, Hagen Smith dominated that matchup. So, it's it also just might not come a great down pitching to last. So, there's not a lot of great guys for them to face, <laughs> right? <laughs> so this, this, might, this might come down to, to Cape data and it might come down to obviously bonus and all that kind of stuff. But like, you also have to think about time left. Like this, this goes into Nick Kurtz too, because what if like, we don't know if George is going to make the college world series. We don't know I mean, if probably um, will in a great year, well, but maybe like, but wake forest is struggling. We don't know if wake forest is going to make the yeah. college world series. Like they are, they are in trouble right now. So you have April and May to evaluate these guys. If some of these guys don't make it into the college world series, I mean, like what that Florida, extra... Florida's a team that might not, right. Aren't they Florida's, kind of like they're, they're, they're having, they're, I mean, they're, not, they're moving guys yeah. all over their team. Like they changed their Friday starter for sec play. Twice. That's weird. And, yeah. and like, well, LSU and again, you had to change. I mean, LSU is yeah. fine. But they changed. Their uh, Friday LSU starter. is, has had some, some rough stretches too. Right. Um, the so Friday you're starter getting down to the point where you're getting down to the point where you have April and May to evaluate these guys and you'll get into conference tournaments, but yeah, you know, it'd be great. It would be really good for everyone, but the Guardians especially to be able to see, um, Condon and Kurtz and Bazana all in the College World Series, so they could face that better pitching, um, or you know, Braden Montgomery. You wanted to talk about? It would be really important for all of them to get into the College World Series, so you can go and face that top tier pitching. No, agreed. I. I... And here's the thing, uh, you know, say, I'm saying that way too much. All of these guys like Condon. So on Saturday, he was unbelievable. Five for six with two home runs. The rest of that weekend, one for eight with a walk and three Ks. Like his last week, was it like he he had kind of did a similar thing where he had one really stellar game, one average game and one like forgettable game. Um, for those are Bazana only played two games. He was two for four with five blocks and a home Ran run, but also out, three yeah. errors. Yeah, you know, it's like there, there's up and down with that. But the, the guy who stood out this past weekend um is is Braden Montgomery. Braden Montgomery was at Stanford, uh two-way guy, has not pitched much this year, but like a really good athlete. Not though, like you go and you look at 60 times, it's not spectacular. I need to see if he's playing center field or not. Switch hitter, bonus points for that. You don't see as many of them anymore. This past weekend against Auburn, who I believe Condon faced last weekend, uh, mm -hmm. he was seven for 14, no strikeouts, two walks, two doubles, and five home runs. So if you're keeping track at home, seven hits, all extra bases. That That's a heck of a week. This is a guy who's been on the radar forever at the start of the year. Him and Condon were probably in about the same draft tier range, um, depending on how you're evaluating them. You know, he is an interesting player. Could he rise up? I mean, 15 home runs now because he had five this past weekend against an Auburn team that was ranked eighth in the country. Um, yeah, it's he he he's got he's going to push his name up. I know Caglione had a 
had a walk off, but there's still a lot of swing and miss. I scoff. He walked and, a lot of guys this weekend too. As a not, pitcher, not yeah, really like, I, I just scoff at anyone where it's like they want to talk about elite contact skills. Yeah, okay, elite contact is fine, but he's just not. Um, there's still too much That's of college pitching. Yes. Yes. You know, and so I like Ryan, I was looking at like, who has the highest strikeout to walk ratios. And he was, Ryan Johnson was number two. Older brother is in the minors right now. And is I believe Dallas Baptist all time win leader, funky delivery, but Cleveland has had some history. Doug and Casey. I know that hasn't worked out well, but if taking guys with funkier deliveries, uh, he's a big kid who's missed an absolute ton of bats this past year. Um, but what stood out for me is I watched his film from last year in preparation for the show today. And it, it, he was not sharp. He was not, the control was not there. Um, well, I guess the control was fine. The command wasn't as much there. I saw him, I saw the catcher adjusting. His command is a lot better this year. And then while he's missing an absolute, I think he's got like a strikeouts per 10 of like, uh, uh, strikeouts per nine of 16 or something like crazy like that. He is getting a lot of guys to swing out of the zone. He makes guys expand the zone. Now, is that, is this stuff going to be good enough to do it once he's not pitching at Dallas Baptist? I don't know. Like, you know, it was New Mexico. I was watching New Mexico and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. And this is kind of what I'm talking about, where like the other side of the CAGS thing, where it's like Ryan Johnson is is killing teams. Like a walk rate under two, a strikeout rate, I believe, again, over 16. Um, but the level that he's facing is why he can do that. Not to say the stuff isn't good. I mean, it's a potential. It's the slider looks amazing. He's got four pitches. It is just a very weird delivery. And there's going to be a lot of people who think he's more of a reliever. Uh, probably going to go somewhere in the second, maybe early in the second. I like him, um, but I can totally see like, you know, supposedly he can hit. A, he's touched 100 in the wow. numbers there. But with a lot of these guys, I just want to stress that like he can be successful because he can put the zone outside and guys aren't used to seeing pitches like he throws and they swing at it it's not always as effective. And that's where you kind of have to evaluate who is effective in the zone. Who's able to make good contact decisions in the zone. We didn't have time today for Dakota Jordan. But he's second in the nation in strikeouts amongst qualified hitters and third in walks or first in walks. Like you have to look at things like that. Absolutely. Dylan Drayling a nice weekend for Tennessee as well. I know there were some good evaluations Continues on him. Perform. Yeah, he's going to wind up being a day one guy, possibly. And then, hey, Agreed. Nick Kurtz. Kurtzmas is back on. Two dingers on Sunday. Wake Forest needs to get in the tournament so they can he can play longer and make up for lost time. That's all we got for today. We yep. have run out of time. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk about the game one win over Seattle. They're going to come back. So we'll talk about how the offense came back and Nick and uh, Nick Kurtz. I'm sitting Nick Kurtz. Tristan McKenzie settled down. Yep, four two right now as we leave you. Thank you all for watching. Thanks you to was it Ashbury Collins who left forty million uh, comments. We appreciate each and every one. Supposedly that helps with the algorithm. But thank you to all of our everydayers. Thank you to everyone who joins us. Uh, hopefully this game will be turned around. We'll have a fun talk tomorrow. Thank you all and go go guard.